it's Holly here from Your Past is a Gift. I had to share in this video, okay, because during the day now, I take care of the elderly, okay, and it's a job I've been doing since October of last year. And there's an, an elderly person that I'm taking care of at the moment, and they were in hospital recently. And in the hospital, I found out that they're 95 years old. 95, I didn't realize that they were already, I thought they were 90, but 95 just sounds old, right? So um, when this person got back home, you know, they're out of the hospital and they couldn't wait to go back home because they've lived their whole life there, you know? And I remember we were sitting one day and I asked them, you know, this, this day I was caring for them, you have been here for a long time. 95 years is a long time. You know, you must have so many favorite moments, you know? And I'm just curious, I wanted to know, you know, what, what were their favorite moments? What did they treasure the most? What do they, they take with them as the most precious memories? You know, I had to ask. And I just, I'm sorry, but I was left gobsmacked at the simplicity of the answer because they turned to me and they said, being born. To them, it seemed like such an obvious answer. But to me, I thought they were going to say when their kids were born or when they got married or, you know, these big moments in their life. But just being born, which meant that they had enjoyed all of it that all of it was precious, all of it was special, all of it, just being born. And that was a moment, oh, just, I'll treasure that forever, just how simple, being born. You know, that we are here, that we can connect with others, that we can create our lives the way we want it. It's such a gift, you know? Anyway, so being born how beautiful um, so in this video I wanted to talk about you know how words can sometimes get in the way of us moving forward you know because reading through this book now of the power of now which has been the, the one thing that has just really opened my eyes you know to my life and the words that Eckhart Tolle uses, you know, he's so careful. He's very pedantic about the words that he chooses to explain certain things. And I get that because, you know, for the longest time, if I tried to, I couldn't use the word God. I just, for a long time, I couldn't even say the word God. And I realized because they repeated so much through church, you know, that God is this image in the sky of this old man with a long flowing beard and he's there to judge you, you know, when it's your, you've died, you've gone to the gates and he decides, you know, whether you're allowed in or you're not. And so this is the image of God. You know, I had this, this image of God that was an angry God that was always punishing people, you know, and you know, after many Sundays of going to church and hearing these stories about this God, that word has been destroyed for me. I can't use it without the subconscious going, nah, -uh. you know, remember it's that angry guy that's in the sky that's going to punish you. That's not what that means. So, you know, in the, or through all the Louise Hayes books that I've read, she uses the word life. And somehow I can't relate to that word either. I don't know why, but you know, when she says life supports you, that life is there for you, all these things. And I, it doesn't resonate with me, the word life. Somehow through this book, or maybe it was just my time to accept, you know, the truth of what is. Eckhart Tolle uses the word being. And for me, the word being makes perfect sense. It made perfect sense, you know, this presence this energy that is just everything, you know, that's huge enough to create planets and stars and, and everything, even the tiniest little thing like a cell and an atom, you know, he's thought of everything, this being. It's just amazing. Now with that, I can be connected because for the longest time, right, I, you know, these last few years when I've 
I've realized, you know, what it's all about. I feel more connected to others. I feel more connected to people around me. I feel more connected to my pets, you know, all these things. But I never felt connected to God, you know, to that presence, to that being that's created everything. I've never felt connected to my creator. I found that really hard. I couldn't say that I was connected. Because, you know, in church, oh, we were we were separate from God. We were not, you know, we weren't good enough to be a part of God. We were separate. He was up there and we were down here. So it's only been, you know, through a few weeks ago, I stumbled on the book Home with God and I read that. And that started the connection a little bit, you know, where I realised... I must be connected, you know, but now reading this gorgeous book, I know I am. Like, there's no doubt in my mind that I know I am, you know? It's taken me this long, you know, 30 years just to get here. But, you know, once I decided to tell my mind that, you know, to (laughs) zip it, I've had enough of your stories, I've had it. And I've started to really focus on what's in front of me right now. What is in front of me right now? Whatever the, you know, whatever task I'm doing. The only time I've really found I do that is when I'm playing piano. I can't help it. You know, I'll be playing the music and I can't help but just that's all I'm doing. Um, There were times there where my mind would be wandering off, you know, oh, the bills, oh, this, oh, that, or the other problems 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 you know while I was playing but for the most part that's one thing that I've loved about piano is that I'll sit down and I just let the music take over when I'm sitting with the piano and it's just me and the music that's it I just get engrossed in the sounds and I don't think of anything else I don't worry about anything else but how it makes me feel or how the person that wrote it must have felt to have created that you know, what were they going through? So it's been really interesting just telling my mind to be quiet. I'm not interested in what you have to say. I just want to know what's going on here right now. And use all my senses, you know, to be aware of what's right in front of me. Whatever it is, whatever I'm doing. What is going on? You know, now I have a cup of coffee and I not only savour the taste but I I take in the smell you know and how it feels when it's going down your throat and it's nice and warm and that taste of the coffee all those little things you know your food what does it taste like what does it feel like in your mouth as it's going round all those little things we never stop to experience that We're too busy thinking about our minds somewhere else, always. It's never in what we're doing in that moment. We're never giving it our full attention, ever. I know because that's how I've been the last 30 years. The only time I can say, I can honestly say I was like that was when I was a kid, like my little girl. Up until I was about 12, 13, maybe 14, I was lucky enough every day was the day you know I was just focused on what was happening next on what I was learning next but for the most part my mind's always been fast forward far far ahead with all the dramas of what's going to happen what's not going to happen what's all the things that never happen so today I encourage you to stop tell your mind to stop to be quiet What's in front of you right now? What can you take in right now? Just think about it. Use your mind to just absorb what's in front of you right now without judging it, without labeling it, but just looking at it for what it is. You know, if it's a flower, take in the smell, take in the colours, take in the texture of how does that flower feel if you touch it. Just be present with it. It's so much simpler 
with having to judge everything all the time and having to resist everything all the time. I'm not accepting this moment. All right, my darlings, I love you guys. Remember to click like and subscribe below so you don't miss any of the messages and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.